See, you thought you thought that I wasn't gonna kick off the first <laughs> tech trainer show with some music up in here. <laughs> Who likes it when I bring it back to the nineties? This is on my road trip. I love my it. road trip mix. All yeah, right. Music is the best. We're so unprofessional right now. Hardly. I don't Hardly. see anybody dancing except for me. Well, I was dancing. Oh, we're dancing. Right, good, 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 good. So it's the very first tech trainer show. <gasps> whoop, whoop. I'm gonna turn the music down a minute and let everyone I can't hear themselves. you. All right, Shannon, go. Who are you, Shannon? I am Shannon Dagger. I am the Regional Technology Director for the Ohio Valley Region. Whoop, whoop. Whoop. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey. Laura, what's up? Hey, I'm Laura Posey. I'm the Regional Tech Trainer for the Northwest Region, which happens to be the best region ah. in the United States. Uh-oh, thanks for fighting words, I think. I'm pretty sure them's fighting words. And Leslie. Hey guys, what's up? Leslie Jackson here representing Colorado. I'm the regional tech trainer here for Colorado. The whole awesome. state people. <laughs> I'm Nick Waldwin. I'm the regional tech trainer for the Michigan Northern Ohio region. Uh, Shannon and I are kind of neighbors. I have a little bit of Ohio. I got a little bit of Ohio, but she's got the rest. <laughs> so what areas do you guys all cover? So everyone knows I'm all of Michigan and then like the Cleveland area and Laura. I am Alaska, Washington, Oregon, and Idaho. Oh my gosh, I feel so inadequate right now. She's like, <laughs> I, it's like 17 states, you know. Did you guys know that there is one bear per like 100 square miles in Alaska or one bear per square mile in Alaska or something like that? Yeah, like lots of bears. There, so I don't live there. Um, wow. <laughs> and then tell everyone kind of how, the areas that you cover too. I am the majority of Ohio, except for what Nick, Nick takes on and uh, Kentucky and Indiana as well. Nice. And Leslie? The whole state of Colorado, peeps. Colorado, it's a big state. So we have like 30 market centers and 6,500 agents. I think we're all pretty much similar, right? In like our agent count and our market center count. Yeah. Yeah. I think we, we have, have like 7,000, 7,500 agents. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Oh, we got a one. No big deal. <laughs> you pulled that yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um Not but, me. I have another 1,500. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Well, so the idea behind this show is um, two, twofold, right? So like, you know, every region now, I think every region, every region has a tech trainer, right? And so um, it's a newer position within the company. And our job is to just kind of bring more clarity around the tech, um, talk to our mega teams about how to implement uh, command in their business. Uh, we work with leadership. Um, you know, we teach classes and then we also have, I mean, I don't know what you, about you guys, but I have a tech driver in every market center who also kind of helps me within each market center. So like, while we're up here helping mega agents and team leaders, and then, um, it, it, it drops down to the tech driver who's helping the individual agents within the market center. Is that kind of how you guys have it set up? Yeah. Yes. Yep. yep. All right, cool. Um, great. Oh, there's a good question in the chat. Good tech talk. driver question mark equals tech <laughs> ambassador. And there is kind of a difference between the tech driver and the tech ambassador. So depending on how the regions are defining it, a lot of regions are defining a tech driver as someone who's more of the trainer, market center tech trainer. An ambassador perhaps is an agent who's really into tech, like an ALC tech chair or someone yeah. like that. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, cool, cool. Is that so? But that is that is similar, right? It's similar to kind of like, yep. you know, yep. right? Because then, then you have, then yeah, so tech driver equals tech ambassador. That's what Chris said. Exactly. Well, staff versus agent. In some instances, it's actually a staff member. And in others, it's an agent who kind of does it um, along, you know, alongside. I think it's important, no matter what, like to at least have some sort of knowledge of real estate. Like, you don't, you know, or technology, like you don't have to have, um, like you don't have to actively have sold real estate, but it's good to know how to have that conversation. So that's what a lot of us are working on specifically, but like, yeah, the whole, so that's one, one part of the reason of having this show is that I want, you know, you guys in command your conversion to get to know some of your tech 
uh, trainers, and these three are um, three of my favorites. Three, the the three favorites. So that's why we're, we're on. And, <laughs> we need uh, to get shirts made. I know we need a. What do you want shirt. them to say? What should the shirts say? Well, we did have some names. We, we threw some. We threw some names around a, a while back. I'll have to remember. I'll have oh, to remember, I remember that. <laughs> I think we, we should do... just. We just need like a Nick emoji or like a Nick bit emoji shirt that's yes, just like yes. we are the regional tech trainers that follow Nick. Like whatever oh, Nick so, does, we're on that board. That is so silly because that is so. <laughs> oh silly. no! I got no, asked the other coffee. day. I got asked if I was the Nick Baldwin for the Ohio Valley region. Who asked you that? I said. Yeah. I said absolutely not. He is the sh He is Shannon Dagger for your region. There you go, there you go. So, um, I love it. you know, listen, that's, it's fine. You know, whatever, Shannon, whatever you say. Um, but uh, yeah, and then, the and then the second part of the reason for having the show is that like, we wanna dig into areas of command that, um, you know, I think that, I think that either agents are, are, are need some clarity around or maybe they need some strategy around. Maybe they haven't, you know, figured out you know what certain features of command do are they maybe they feel like they have to use all of it and uh you know i don't think that they have to use all of it i've always said like command was created for all of for 160,000 agents with all different ways that they do business and so while you go in and you see all these different applets and command has on average like 9,000 different things that it can do um you know you don't run a business with 9,000 different things that you do. So if you're running a business that's heavy on internet lead generation, you're gonna to wanna to dive into uh, campaigns. If you're running a business that's heavy on sphere of influence, you're gonna to wanna to implement the smart plans to help you keep in touch with your database. And so it's for everybody, right? It's not implementing all of command at first is not, in my opinion, the way to go about it. Implementing the aspects of command that can fit into your business that's what you focus on first and then as you get curious right around other ways to run your business then you start to dig in and so i think and you guys can correct me if i'm wrong or add whatever you want to that no, i think you i think you hit it the nail on the head nick it's so important to just know exactly what you need in your business and what is making what's why your why your business is profitable and then sit down and get to know command in those in those same aspects and basically mirror your needs in command because command can do so much that you may not probably know yet, but. Right, so, you know, it does a ton. And so um, today we're gonna focus on campaigns specifically, um, specifically Facebook. Uh, I might dabble a little in a aspect of mailers that has a feature that I think a lot of people don't know about. Uh, Laura, what are you going to talk about today? I'm going to talk about the second stream of income manager, also Ooh. known as referrals. Oh, I think they should change the name to the second stream of income manager. Just like have that acronym across the sidebar <laughs> when you click the box. Yeah. If Jason Abrams and, and David Voorhees are watching, that's the new name for referrals. <laughs> Yeah. Because we need another acronym at Keller Williams, right? Yeah. S, <laughs> S, S, O, I, 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 I can't oh, even. Oh, I, am. I know, right? Or put the T in front. I don't know. <laughs> Referrals yeah. is fine. Referrals is fine. I just like to call it the second stream of income manager. And what are you going to be bringing some clarity? I am going to be talking about smart plans, and I'm happy to answer any questions on Command Market Center as well. So. Oh, oh, Command MC, the elusive mm -hmm. Command MC. Uh, yeah. She's brave. I love well, it. Well, you know, I'm gonna see what I can do. Yeah. All right, and and Leslie, what are you gonna be talking about? We're gonna be talking a little bit about designs and how to up your marketing strategies with design. So love it. Okay, cool. Yeah. So should I start first, or do you want to go first, Laura? Oh, wow. Okay. I'm kidding. You know what? I will take the challenge. No, challenge accepted. Oh, you're going to go first? Oh, you know what? Oh, you, okay, okay. You know how I like to be prepared and all. Can I even have my screen, screen ready. Do you, need, do you need me to make you a host or something? I We're about to find out. I think I got it. Oh, you got you it. It works. See? Hey, you know what? Tech trainer. Sometimes I get this right. Sometimes Damn. I get this part right. Okay. So what you guys are looking at, let me zoom in here. Aha. Uh -huh. 
minute. There we go. That's a little too much. Okay, so what you're looking at is like the referrals dashboard or the referrals homepage. You get there by clicking the beautiful red box, clicking on referrals, and you land here. So the reason why I call it the second stream of income manager, guys, is I actually had the privilege of onboarding a top 20% husband and wife team into command a couple weeks ago. And they were telling me about how they are planning their retirement. They've been in real estate for gosh, 15, 20 years. And they were telling me how. Uh, Laura, don't go. Did we lose Laura? <laughs> I think we might have lost Laura, you guys. Oh my gosh. Well then maybe we shouldn't have Laura going first. Maybe <laughs> we should have someone else going first until Laura gets back. Okay, so I'm going to uh, Pivot. What? I'm going to I'm going to remove Laura right now and uh, Ow. Oh, Laura, you're back. <laughs> but she's at that that fun part they of wanted the, the to... conversation. She doesn't know that she's been cut off. Oh geez. Oh geez. So she's just talking. Should we tell her that she needs to get it? I'm gonna, I am unsharing her screen and I'm now, oh, she went away. I'm gonna go in to share my screen now, okay? Should I go now? All right. Go, go Nick, take it over. Right. When Laura gets back, because it looks like she logged off, when she gets back, she can, she can, she can get back to it. So obviously. All right, so we lost Laura. She's all the way up in Washington. They don't get internet there, clearly. So <laughs> uh, I'm gonna jump into campaigns. Now there's a lot of, um, you know, uh, I think campaigns is something that scares people. Um, they they uh, they don't know like how to create a Facebook ad. They don't know where to start. They don't know what they should do. Um, you know, they don't know who should they target and so on and so forth. Um, so I want to show you just kind of a couple campaigns that I've run recently that were very successful for us. I don't know why I called this one two three Main Street because I didn't like know the address. But um, hey, Laura's back. Laura, I'm gonna go, and then when I'm done, you can go, okay? Because you cut out, so I'm gonna go. Here, oh, here's an ad that I ran uh, for actually my mother uh, in New Jersey, because my mother, Laura, we didn't forget about you. When I'm done, you'll go, because you had you. All cut out. good, all good. So I, I ran this ad for my mother, who still sells in New Jersey. She's she's killing it still, like 58 million in volume. Her team did in 2019. But um, this was an ad that I ran from her, ran for her for a condo that she had. And when you're running condo ads, it's important to, um, the verbiage is extremely important, right? And so you should always ask a question of some kind, get people thinking. Uh, you should always talk about um, what the property offers. Uh, and also it's important to talk about uh, what they're gonna get like when they decide to click more, when they decide to click that learn more button. So here it says, why rent when you can own spacious, affordable two bedroom condo, gleaming hardwood floors, oversized eating kitchen with solid wood cabinetry, click learn uh, for photos, info and price. So, you know, why would they buy this condo for 225, you know, uh, over the over renting, you know, something around the same price in terms of a mortgage and it's a question that you know we get we get asked a lot by buyers and sell, by sellers. I'm sorry, by buyers. I've um, converted many many renters into buyers because they're looking at property that uh, they could potentially own for, right? And so um, it's important to kind of tell them what they're looking, what they're going to get, tell them what the property has, and ask them the question. And also keep in mind, it's important to um, it's very important to not list. The property address. I recently ran an ad with the price uh, in the verbiage, in, and I and I was told that it was it was very successful for a lot of people. I got zero leads and spent thirty dollars, um, so I'm not going to list the price anymore. It was this one. Um, I didn't spend thirty dollars. I'm sorry. I had a thirty dollars spend, but I spent almost nine bucks and got seven clicks and zero leads. Now in my in my experience, I should have gotten probably 10 leads at this point, just in my experience. So I stopped it and I ran it again and I took the price of the, of the property out. So anyway, when you are, um, when you're going to be running an ad and we're going to go into paid ads and we're going to just call it testing the, the, the goal, uh, the, the name of your ad should be your property. And the goal honestly doesn't really matter to, to, for impressions or getting in front of people, it makes no difference. It's just about 
uh, allowing you to understand what you're attempting to do. Um, and you can also do Instagram at the same time. I don't tend to do Instagram unless uh, the property would potentially meet the demographics of Instagram. So you have to be aware of, should I use Instagram? Should I use Instagram? Yes, but Instagram demographics are much, are much younger. It's around like, you know, 18 to 30, whereas Facebook is like 30 to, you know, 45. So if you have a, a very well-priced property and you think it's going to appeal to the Instagram demographic, then definitely use Instagram. But if it's a more expensive property, I would stick to Facebook because um, it will get you, uh, you know, more of where you, it'll get in front of you, the, get, get you in front of the people that you want to be in front of. So let's just search for a property address. So I'll just use the one I was, I'm running now, 85 Park Ave. So, so you guys know, um, if you have listings and you click only my listings, you know, they may or may not show up. I've seen some agents go, my listings aren't showing up and I have them. It's all good. Just go to all listings and type in the address and it'll come right up. You know what I mean? Like just chill out. It's all good. It's there. Here it is right here. So I select it and it just pulls the very first photo, uh, well, it didn't because I didn't give it enough time. Let me let me do this again. Here we go. Uh, I X'd out before I had a chance to populate the photo. Sorry, I know I'm the worst. Okay, for some reason it's not bringing me the photo, but that's okay because down here, when I here I want to show you guys what it looks like. I want to configure the. Um, configure the media. Here it is. So this is the first photo. And I'm actually going to use that because the idea of showing pictures in your ads, give them all the best pictures. So you have the option to use five pictures in a carousel. Don't hide the, um, the images. Put the best pictures you have on that property in the ad because they probably, they're thinking to themselves, oh, uh, you know, like there, these probably aren't the best ones, but if you wow them with really beautiful photos and you don't, you don't keep it, you know, behind a, um, you know, behind a, uh, a registration wall, they're going to respect you a lot more once they get through and they notice that you actually did give them the best pictures of the property. So I want to give these people the best possible photos that we've taken on this house. I mean, it's a beautiful, uh, it's a beautiful luxury condo. So um, I'm not hiding anything from them. You know what I mean? So that's something to think of uh, specifically. Don't, um, you know, don't keep the best pictures from people. Um, all right. Oh, I need this. So I'm just going to choose a logo. You have to put some sort of DBA or, um, you know, or a, uh, or a team logo. And I'm just trying to find like, I don't know if I have a logo for Keller Williams, but I'll just pick whatever I can find. Um, Do you have a question about which picture you normally choose, what shape? So, yeah, okay, that's a great question. So I actually choose, I actually choose the square because it um, has the best play. It, it, it has, Facebook recommends that. So let me show you. So if I'm gonna choose this picture of the kitchen Facebook will say square best for most placements. And that's because it's best for, for mobile. And when this launches, it's not gonna look like this. There's not gonna be empty space on the side. It's gonna fill it out, but it's best for most placements and that's best for mobile and it's best for Instagram. So I would choose the square uh, because um, it's gonna look the best on their platform. And I would do whatever Facebook says because they're point is to get you the most bang for your buck. So if I ch choose the mobile preview, you see, it looks, it looks really good. You know what I mean? It looks really good. It looks really good. Um, now I also got, want you guys to understand that when you're configure for configuring your ad test text, what it's going to do is it's going to um, just pull some information from the MLS and usually the MLS description isn't very marketable. And so as agents, we not only have to be 
realtors, but we have to kind of know how to sell this property, right? We have to like figure out how to get people to click. And so uh, what I'm going to say is I like the first sentence because that's very important. One block from city train and bus because in this area of Glen Ridge, close to the train to New York City is extremely important to people. Um, and I'm also going to say, um, so I'm telling them open, sunny, sophisticated. I'm going to remove the word exceptional because you only have 250 characters. Uh, and uh, then I'll say, um, uh, it's one block from city train bus and Starbucks, literally around the corner, I know for a fact. That's important. Like if there's a Starbucks that you can walk to from the property, like no joke, there's actually statistics that say homes near a Starbucks uh, have a higher value. I'm not even, not even kidding you, Google it. It adds to the, it adds to the value of your property. Um, and so what I'm gonna say here is, you know, click. Hey Nick, do you recommend using emojis during some of these copies and descriptions? Yeah, I'm going to add them. Awesome. So I'm going to add, I add them at the end. Uh, so I always do like a little emoji because it has actually been proven that ads with emojis uh, do get more clicks uh, because it is something that, so I'm going to do open and then I, I'm going to, I'm going to actually throw in like a sun, like it's sunny because I use the word sunny there, right? So I'm going to throw this in here. And then, um, you know, maybe for sophisticated, I'll, I'll do like a book emoji. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you want to have fun with it. Um, and then down here, I just do uh, some, some, uh, some finger pointing down because that's giving them direction to click down, you know? Um, The headline goes underneath the actual ad itself, so we can see that better. And then I, the description shouldn't be 250 characters. I don't know why it says that. It should be like one sentence. Um, and you can shuffle uh, because KW gives you ideas. And so I'm just going to use uh, view photos and videos of this home because the link I'm going to supply has photos and it actually has a virtual tour because we have virtual tours embedded in our website. Um, and my mother had put one on the on command. And so the Matterport tour is actually in there. So I'm going to save that. Now you guys are saying, well, what about, I don't want to advertise as Keller Williams. That's okay. You don't have to. So as long as you have your, and I went through the ad media for you guys already. So don't worry about that. Um, as long as you have your Facebook pages connected to command, uh, which you do through settings, you can then easily just change your uh, Facebook page. Done. Now, it's important for you guys to always use a lead generation platform if you're trying to get leads. Uh, if you want to just kind of promote something passively, then you're going to use a site or landing page, which will then just get you more reach, but it's not going to get you uh, the leads unless they, unless they, you know, choose to give you their information, which they typically don't wish to do. And because our website doesn't have a ton of lead capture, using the Facebook lead generation form is really important. And if you don't know what that does, when you choose it, you're in between your ad and your destination link, there's a form that pops up for the consumer that automatically auto-populates their name, email, and phone number. It's basically the info that Facebook has on that person. And all they have to do is submit it. And so it makes it very easy. Is the information 100% accurate all the time? No, but it is more time than it's not. And so I'm going to find, I'm going to use uh, my website uh, to direct them to, and I can use a couple different things. Your website or landing page, what I would suggest is to use your website because if they don't like what they see or they feel like it's not right for them or it's too, pri too pricey, uh, they're going to most likely stay on your site and look for other homes. If it's a landing page, it's usually single property, and therefore they are not going to 
uh, they're going to click away. They're just going to bounce. Now, there is one here that has the virtual tour. I believe it's this one. So let's see. Yeah, so in case you guys didn't know, you have the ability to add a virtual tour to all of your all of your listings. So when someone clicks through and they click virtual tour, it then brings them to the 3D Matterport. And so I'm advertising photos and a video and a virtual tour in the ad. So I wanna make sure that it actually goes to that if they click through to the website. So I'm just gonna copy and paste the listing from my website and I'm gonna use that as the destination URL. Oops, I didn't get that, sorry. You just wanna make sure that in your ad, you're giving them what you're promising. You have to make sure that you're giving them what you're promising. And then here, just targeting, what I like to do with targeting is um, figure out like where your buyers are coming from. And so, because in Glen Ridge, they're coming from usually new, uh, usually the New York City area, um, and Glen Ridge is about 10 miles west of Midtown Manhattan, I'll target 30 miles because it'll go up to upstate, it'll go maybe, <clears throat> to go out, you know, into the five boroughs of Manhattan. Uh, so that's important too. Um, I just wanted to be able to reach the people that I needed to get to. And so with interests, because Facebook and KW have partnered on this, they have taken all of the aspects of fair housing violations that may um, get your ad disapproved. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to go, you have, you guys have like, hundreds of interests to choose from. And so because this is a luxury condo, the first thing I'm gonna target is luxury and I'm gonna choose people that are interested in luxury, luxury vehicles and luxury property. Then I'm going to choose people who are look at homes on Zillow. Or, and then I'm gonna use people that look at homes on realtor.com. And uh, if this is a condo, I'm going to use condo. I believe there's a condominium choice. There is. I also believe that there is a townhouse choice. Uh, yep. So my my point is, is when you're using targeting, if it's a luxury home, make sure that you're targeting things that luxury buyers are interested in. Uh, maybe you want to choose people that work in finance. Uh, you want to choose people that like luxury property and luxury homes. People that look on Zillow and Realtor.com for homes. If it's a condo, definitely choose condo and townhouse. So those are some just tips for you guys uh, to, to choose when, um, when targeting your ads to get into the right people. Because you can only target interests. You can't target demographics because that's fair housing violations. Um, now, real quick, before I wrap up, um, let's say I'm going to do $100 for this. And I'm gonna do $100 over the course of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, that is 10 days. Yeah, so because I'm going to do this on Facebook and Instagram, I wanna make sure that I choose use automatic placements for Facebook and Instagram. And the reason why you wanna do that is because if your ad is not performing well on one of the platforms, then, it, then your ad spend will be moved over to the platform that it's performing the best on. So you don't have to worry about oh, well, what if I'm not getting leads from Instagram? I'm only getting leads on Facebook, but it's spending all my money on Instagram and Facebook. Just choose automatic placements and that, won't, that will just completely solve your problem. I wanna also make sure that you guys choose Instagram story because they get much more engagement than, than, than ads in the Instagram newsfeed. And so up here, I actually missed a step. You're actually gonna wanna choose Instagram story under the Facebook and Instagram ads section because Instagram stories are right at the top of the newsfeed. Every time they open up their Instagram app, they're gonna see it and that's gonna give you the most visibility. So save it. We did duration and budget and you, I'm gonna do $30 for 10 days. I'm gonna choose dynamic placement. And then I'm basically done. I'm not gonna publish this one because I'm already running it, but uh, that is how you create an ad and effectively target the right people. Uh, I'm done. I don't have time to go into mailers because I wanna move over to you guys. But if anybody has any questions, just type it in the chat and I'll, and I'll answer those for you. So thank you very much. I will stop now. Go ahead, Laura. <laughs> okay. So as luck would have it, internet crashed and burned. I'm on a, I'm on a mobile hotspot. So here we go. Oh, you're good. Um, 
Okay, so I am going to preserve the video and share my screen here. And like we were saying, second stream of income manager, and I think I cut off in the middle of my story. Um, I'm going to have you guys wave frantically at me if I start to slow down. But um, this is based on a conversation I had with a husband and wife team that want, wants to retire. They want to travel and they're going to use this referral network and tool in command to actually refer their incoming and outgoing business so that they can go travel. And so when they came to me, they were asking, well, hey, um, you know, what we really need is something where we can track our referrals. We're willing to use a spreadsheet. And I thought to myself, oh, I wonder if they've seen the referral network within command and they hadn't. And it was a real joy actually sharing this part of our platform with them because it provides so much opportunity for them to manage their incoming and outgoing referrals. So what you're looking at is the dashboard and you can see your pending invites, your pending referrals, um, and then the referrals you've received and sent. So you guys, referrals works like Facebook in a lot of ways. So you, in order to bring someone into your referral network, you essentially have to friend them just like you would in Facebook. So you can send referrals to people who aren't in your network, but if you want someone to be in your network, you wanna friend them just like you would on Facebook. So what does that look like? Um, I'm gonna click on my pending invites here. Man, I'm so nervous my Wi-Fi is gonna crash again. Are we still good? Can I get a thumbs up? Thank you guys. Okay, cool. So what you can see here is this is what it looks like when someone invites you to be a part of their referral network. And this is what it looks like when you have outbound invites where you invite someone to be a part of your referral network. Um, additionally, this is how you can categorize the people that are in your network. So I've got three people in my network. Two of them are my market center tech trainers. And you can actually see their agent stats, which if you hover over the little eye, it'll tell you, um, but it's based on sales volume in the last 12 months, number of transactions in the last 12 months. And then you can have internal notes. So you can send someone in your referral network, internal notes. And then um, this profile is from their marketing profile as well. So you can get a quick little overview of someone on your network. If you're like, shoot, I need to send this to someone in Washington, but I'm not sure, you know, what, what their, what their strengths are. My favorite part is that you can tag people in your referral network, just like you tag contacts. So you can say, all right, I want to refer to someone who's also my market center tech trainer. And then you can see these are the two people that are also my market center tech trainers and that are tagged over here on the right as such. So then I can find my people in my referral network based on certain criteria, whether it's state or location or luxury or where you met them or whatever. Um, my favorite part about referrals, you guys, is the map. I love maps and I love that this is a whole day, well, data to help you grow your business and find people that can help build your business. So um, I'm gonna use Washington as an example. I'm Seattle based. So I'm gonna type in Seattle. And now I'm searching the Seattle area for agents by production. So I need to zoom in a little more before I'm gonna get more information on the sidebar here. It says zoom in. So I'm gonna zoom in to this area, which is like downtown proper Seattle. And then you can see that it's sorting the agents who have transactions in this area. And you can sort randomly and by closing to my referral network or send them a referral. The send referral is just like inputting into a contact card, you guys. It's a lot of the same data. My favorite part is that if you're not selecting someone who's already in a database, you can create a new contact, add their information right here. And then when you send that contact to 
your um, to your referral, it adds it into your command as well as uh, sends the referral directly to that agent. So it doesn't allow you to do double entry, meaning you don't have to enter that contact first and then come over to referrals. So thank you to the developer who thought of that. That's cool. Yeah, thumbs up. I love it, Nick. And then uh, another useful tool from the map is the referral patterns. You've probably seen this in some of the videos at my family reunion and such, but this is a really valuable tool for you to go and essentially like find people that are in a good referral pattern for you. So this is based out of Spokane where our regional headquarters are. And if you look at the referral patterns, you can see over here on the right, percent of referrals from Spokane, Washington go to Coeur d'Alene, which is the neighboring market center. Um, and then have Boise and Vegas. So how I would use this as an agent is I know that in Washington, there's a lot of snowbirds, right? People that live up north in the summer and then in the winter, they move somewhere warmer. So I'd be like, okay, I know there's a huge second home market coming in and out of Washington going to Arizona. Spokane referrals go to Prescott, Arizona. I'm going to make it my mission to find someone in Prescott, Arizona so that I can create a relationship and then start sharing referrals with that person. Going back to my referrals, I just want to show you how this becomes the second stream of income manager. You can see the referrals that are pending, active, funded, lost, expired, rejected, and whatnot. It's a project manager for your referrals. So I'm gonna click on funded and you can see that this is a buyer that I sent to someone in my network. And um, this is one of the, this is the consumer that I recommended to this referral partner. You can see the price range. This was obviously a training one from a long time ago. You can see that they were pre-approved, pre-qualified, and you can even view the activity log. So I created the referral, I requested a 25% fee, this was accepted, and then it was completed. So you can actually manage your referral going and active, just like you would your opportunities. So this is how you can really keep track of where your referrals are going and coming from and what status they're in. You can even filter. If you're like a referral machine and you're like, oh my gosh, I have so many, you can filter by buyer, seller, landlord, tenant, et cetera, et cetera. I love the fact that with the, with the migration patterns, that's a great leverage piece to, um, to use at a listing consultation. Because you can say, you know, listen, based on, based on this data, you know, people are moving from this place to here. And so I'm going to, you know, target, target buyers in, in, in that area, which is a huge leverage piece. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that's a good point too. Like not only can you use this to go get more leads from that area, you can also use this as a selling point for your sellers. Like I'm not only going to market your listing here, I'm going to market your listing to the places that I know that there's a large reciprocal market. Yeah, that's a great, it's, I love that idea. Sweet. Cool. It's a very un misunderstood portion of command, I think. And it's, it's very powerful because it is your second income manager stream of income. absolutely yeah. absolutely awesome thanks laura who wants yeah. to go next i'll go okay hi guys leslie hey, jackson here hey, hey. What's, what's up? up we're gonna talk a little bit about designs you guys ready i love 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 designs i love designs Oh, so great. You could do so much with them, you guys. Um, I'm just going to rattle off a few and then I'll show you a little how to. Um, new, any new agents out there? Uh, listing presentations, buyer presentations, social media ads, um, great way to do direct mailers. You can create custom postcards. There's so much that you can do. And I love it because KW already offers an awesome, awesome library for you all to choose from. So let's go check it out. So here I'm on the left-hand side, I'm gonna click on the design applet and it'll take you to your design. So what you're seeing are about 267 of designs that I've already created. Um, but let's talk about how you can actually create one. So I'm gonna click hey, on Leslie, the plus button. Hey Leslie, can I just say one thing? 
If yeah. you could open a few more tabs, that, I, that, that would be <laughs> You guys, I'm a tab freak. This is nothing compared to how much I usually have open. Um, let's go back. Nick likes to interrupt, just kidding. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> so I clicked on the plus button in uh, the design area and it brought me to here. So I clicked on social because of course, as we all know, we're all digital now. So a great way to promote your app, listing presentations, buyer presentations. Um, and I love it because they have it all listed over here on the left-hand side. Um, also just pay attention to what kind of dimensions these are already in. And I just wanna say, let's not try to reinvent the wheel. If you don't have the time and you're not that creative and you're like, you know, you get your Achilles heel and you're like, oh my gosh, I don't even know where to begin. This is why it's here. It's such a quick and easy way to share to your um, Facebook page or Instagram page. A great way to also implement any design into your campaigns. So the, uh, what Nick had showed you, you know, when we were, when he was showing you how to create a listing campaign, you could, you could actually browse your library as another option. Let's say you don't have a listing and you come in here and you create a design, you can actually pull your designs into your campaign. So it's a beautiful thing. It makes it super and e super quick and easy for you all. So let's just, just, let's just check out a few. So there you are, listing presentations uh, for sale, just listed, and they're all really beautifully made. So again, like I don't ever go in and recreate them. Can you? Yes, you can. You can customize any and all of these. Um, lead generation. So you can even go out there and promote your website. Um, and even like the business basics down here. So you have business cards, letterheads, email signatures. I mean, the list goes on and on. Um, now let's just go into one of these just so you can get a, you know, a quick view of what you can do. So I'm gonna click on use and it pops up and it really brings us into the design editor. Um, what I love about the design editor is that I can, I could keep it or I could change it completely. I could delete this whole thing and start from scratch. Um, as I hover my cursor and double click, I could type in my message um, and change up what it's gonna look like. Um, I'll use my cursor here to just you know, drag and drop wherever my message is gonna go. If I were to highlight this font, I could change the color. So it's just like any kind of editor, you can really create um, you know, your own and really put the message out there. And if you're not that creative, don't, you know, reinvent the wheel, like I said. But the really cool thing is, is that you can come in here and pull any other photos that you like to use. Um, there are icons in here already, already uh, here for you. Also, there are a lot of cool stock images that you could pull from the KW library, which is great. Um, great way to just plug and play. Um, and I don't want to get too much into the weeds, but another really cool thing about this is about the design option is that you could download any kind of format. So you could download a JPEG, a PNG. Um, what I really think is cool is that you can um, include thumbnails. So thumbnails are just a great way to promote any kind of video that you're promoting out there, especially on YouTube. Uh, create a thumbnail for your YouTube channel. So that's a lot of fun things that you guys could do. Hold on a second. Is that new? No. The thumbnail? <laughs> no? Has that no. always been there? Um, not always. I think they, I think we threw out the thumbnail at the beginning of the year-ish. Okay, now I feel like an idiot because I emailed Annie and said, hey, can we get thumbnails? <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. awesome. Okay, cool. I know. I, you know what else, by I the way? Nick Baldwin something, you guys. Well, no, Facebook, <laughs> Facebook, um, the Facebook images in designs also fit into thumbnails. So. Yes, yes, they do, for sure. Um, and then what I love is that you can uh, come in here and share directly to your Facebook page by just using the share option. So that's really cool. Um, one really, one really, um, really, really awesome thing that I wanted to point out to you all and see if it shows up here. Sometimes it will and it will not. But basically, you could come in here and add your entire marketing kit 
into your designs. Meaning if you have all of your colors and your logos already picked out for you know, who you are as a real estate agent, and instead of always having to upload every single time, you can actually add um, a branding kit to your design so that um, anytime that you are editing a design, you could pull in those things. So lots of cool options. Uh, let's see, my library, I believe, is where you go. And it's still not going to pull up for me. Usually at the bottom, you'll see an option where you can say, add a library. But it's not going to pull up for me. Let's see. Hmm. All right. Hey, show people the fact that you can use the app, like pictures of your app. That's a super cool feature. Yeah, let's go back. Do you mean outside of this, Nick? Oh, like hey, Leslie, I found a place this morning where you can add to your library in that top right corner where that plus library is. That's where yes. the brand kit was hiding for me this oh, morning. Oh, it showed up in a different place. You got to love command yes. for that. Yeah, there it is. So there's your brand kit. So you could come in and show your, choose your colors. You could add any kind of font. Um, you could add your own images or logos. So there you go. Cool. <clears throat> like if you go to, go to. Okay, and the then what were you wanting me to go show? To the, go to the listings tab. Yes. And then, you know, choose like, I don't know, for sale. Perfect. Yeah. And then just pick like uh pick one that's got like a bit like a really big like like pick the one uh like any of them any for sale one i don't care whichever one you want to choose let's choose this one she looks happy and yeah and then go into app images oh yes right here mm -hmm. and then yes, I, yes, my yes. favorite one you go down go down go down further for that really cool. those are this my one? favorite like the 3d ones yeah yeah, that is because, pretty cool. Because you can make a whole image, uh, like, you know, if you have a just listed, you can throw an app image and say, you know, download our download our app for more information, and then have the call yep. for the app. Like that's super fun. Yeah, and and it, I love the the idea of just being able to layer as much as you want on here. Um, the plus button means you use an image, or you could replace an image. But I like this option because then you could use it as a background image too. So mm -hmm. like if I were to come in here and just delete mm -hmm. here, I could just use this as a background image and it'll pop up. There it is. Okay, yeah, Leslie, so. show where you change the layers as well so that when you want to bring send something to the front or the back because I have a lot of oh, people that yeah. lose things in the designs and then they can't figure out where they are. So maybe that would be- Yeah, important. yeah, definitely. So what Shannon's talking about is like, say I want to send this layer to the back of this image. So I would select the image first and then over here where it says arrange, you would just say send the top or send the bottom. Meaning if I send this to the bottom, it's going to be behind this image. Or if I send it to the top, which is pretty cool. Um, I like that option as well. I keep adding them. Sorry, I keep using the duplicate, duplicate one. Hang on one second. Let's see. So see how now it's going behind this other image. So great way to just kind of layer and look a little more 3D-ish, which is pretty cool. Um, but I could really discuss a ton, but I want to give some time to, to Shannon back. Um, did we have any other questions? Uh, no, but someone just told me to shut up. Um, <laughs> but you know what? Like I wanted to, I wanted people to see that cool app image so i'm pretty I sure that it. i let leslie talk but i wanted people to know that there was that cool <laughs> app image. because no honestly i i get asked a lot where do i find those where do i find those yeah so, yeah no where they you know, are. The, other, the other thing i get asked a lot is the um the ruler in there for the text when you want when you're editing text and people find that small little text and you can go up to the top and click on that little ruler and then just type in your text that's an awesome awesome little feature too yeah, there's so much in here, you guys. And then just wanted to shout out here in my designs. You could start from blank. You could import a PDF file, or you could also uh, put and create folders. So like if I was going to always do my social media posts, I can create a folder by just simply clicking on new folder 
name my folder and then drag all my images in. So you could be super organized, which is pretty rad. And then the edit my PDF is pretty sweet too, because you can come in here and edit any PDF and it'll basically read all the font, read all the mapping and you can change it up, which is pretty sweet, especially for any documents. All right. Super that was cool. like my, my cliff note design. I could have done like a whole hour. <laughs> I love it. So good. Thanks guys. Shannon. Awesome. Awesome. Well, if you will, I will share my screen. So today I am talking about smart plans and I want to share something with you um, before I do that. And why I feel super passionate about smart plans. I am a big believer in statistics and I want to make sure that you can see my photo. Can you see this photo on sales statistics right here? So if you're in the Ohio Valley region, you have seen me share this before and I think it's super impactful. And 48% um, of salespeople never even follow up with the lead. So, I mean, that's huge. Hey, Shannon, we can't see a sales statistic page we could only see your smart plans well that's what i asked you and you gave me the i know I, I know i thought you were gonna say you can't see my smart plans and i was trying to be an encouraging there we go now we can see okay. it 48 of people can never never follow up with somebody and 80 percent of sales are made in the fifth to twelfth contact and so when you think 80 percent of sales if you follow up with somebody you are a million times ahead of the average agent that is out there. And it is so easy to do by utilizing smart plans. And so like they are my passion because you can use smart plans in so many different ways. And one, you can use them for leads and contacts. And that's, that's kind of the obvious way. I encourage team leaders to use them to stay in touch with their agents. I encourage rainmakers to use them to stay in touch with their agents, use them in every way possible because it is freeing up your time and giving you leverage to do the things that you, you do best. So um, I know that we're short on time, so I'm not gonna go for a, a long, long time, but now I'm gonna go and I'm going to show you my smart plans. So I'll run through. I think the, can now, now Laura, before I uh, move too fast, can you see my smart plans? Good, okay, just making sure. So you can see that KW has put 10 smart plans in the library for you to choose from. They're all here under the library. And what I get asked a lot is when we um, add these to our particular library, which is my smart plans is your personal library, why would you have to have them added if you go from library and then you have to add them to smart plans? And it seems a little bit redundant. But let's imagine a day and age where we are two or three years down the road and we have hundreds of smart plans to choose from. You are not going to want to search and find smart plans everywhere. And so you need to add these smart plans to your personal library as you want to use them or you have the ability to actually create smart plans. And I think that's the most fun thing in the world to do. Um, well, maybe not the most fun thing in the world, but in command, <laughs> how about that? And so, and I also think it's the best way to learn how to edit any of the smart plans that are editable um, by actually starting to create one. So just a highlight here on this page, you can see how many contacts are subscribed to a smart plan in your, um, in your command by looking at the number right here and also how long they last and how many touches they're gonna make with your client. Like Leslie said, don't reinvent the wheel. You have a 36 touch already built in in your library. So if you're just getting started, come to this library and choose add smart plan into yours. And by creating it, you can with biweekly neighborhood nurture, with the eight by eight new contact, the quarterly call plan, the birthday plan, you can create your own 36 touch you can go far beyond 36 touches in the click of a button. It's super, super easy. And everybody who knows me knows they're on a smart plan um, because I love them so much. And it's not a, la a less personal way. It enables me to talk to more people on a consistent basis because I get responses and I get replies from people. And, and then we get to engage in a really more meaningful way. And so um, when you're looking at smart plans over here to the right, you have actions. You can add people to your smart plans right there. 
let's ignore these little gray arrows, but you might have some exciting features coming for sharing um, your smart plans if you're a rainmaker down the road. You can copy and you can edit if you have the darker gray pencil next to it. So this is where you can edit certain smart plans that KW has already made for you. And if you wanna remove it, you have the ability to delete it here. Well, like I said, one of the things that I like to do the most is create a smart plan. And so um, if I'm just creating this today, I'm gonna to say, I'm gonna give it a, a little quick name and I'm gonna click apply and I'm gonna show you just really quickly how easily this is to do. So you have this blank almost template for smart plans here. It's wanting you to fill this in with a rich variety of stuff. So you have lots of different options over here at the click of a button, each of these will fill in. So send email, we've got it here. Now you've got simple email and HTML. And so explore it and what it means and don't be scared. This is a uh, library email templates for you. I like the simple ones where you can just type in here and say, hey. And if you've ever looked, Nick Baldwin's got one or two Facebook care plans that you might've seen out there. Um, and we've got what we call merge fields. So you can say, hey, first name, how are you? And that's a simple, simple touch with somebody in an email or a text message. You can do something very similar. So now I've got text messages here and I can do the same thing, merge those fields here as well. These can be moved up or down. You can delete them, you can save them and you can restart them. So by combining a series of events here, you can then restart the flow and you can have a long-term smart plan as well. So take the time to explore all of these things. I don't wanna um, run us too late. And uh, I know we've got an hour scheduled here. You've got tasks that'll appear. You can keep your life and your contacts super organized, um, have a lot of fun with it. And one thing I will say, last tip on this is always send the smart plan to yourself first. So um, test it out, check it out, send it to yourself. If you make a change to it, again, send it to yourself first. Always check and make sure there's never been a time that I've done a smart plan that I have that I haven't wanted to change it when I saw the way it looked. It might just be a, a period that I forgot, an exclamation point, a smiley face, whatever it is that I forgot to put in there. I've always wanted to change it. So always send it to yourself first and check and see how it goes. That's hey, all I Shannon, I just wanted to say I love the part of smart plans where you can what I call jelly hop, like add smart plans to another smart oh my plan gosh. to another love smart it. plan to keep it going. Creating a smart plan and what, what Laura's talking about right here is add to smart plan. So at the end of my smart plan, I can add to smart plan. So if I wanted to say, send an email and then put a delay in there, I can add a delay in, in the middle here and say, wait seven days and then send them a text message. And then I would put another delay in and say, you know, wait seven days, call them, make a task for me to call them. And at the very end, if I, have, if I want to, I can add them to another smart plan and check it out, all of the KW smart plans are right here. And so it'll automatically add them to that smart plan. So it's pretty awesome. Yeah, that, that piece of advice that you gave them about always test it on yourself first. I mean, that's like the best piece of advice because- Never regretted it. <laughs> no, don't just set your clients up on stuff. Always set yourself up on it first. Um, because if it messes up, it messes up on you, you know? Or yeah. if you know, or try a family member or something. You know what I mean? Just yeah. don't send it out to your database. I have a, um, and I'm sure most people have this, but like I have a Gmail that's just for receiving spam or things like that, that I might want to kind of keep separate from my main email. And so I try it out and I send it there and I go there and I check it. And, um, and so it's not my main email, but it's just a Gmail that holds other things. If I go to a store and they ask for my email and I feel uncomfortable, I just can just give them that and not be bothered with it on my phone. And so this is a great, great way of doing that as well. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. That was super fun. You did a great job, everybody. I feel like we could have had like another hour to this, you guys. I know. Like, <laughs> I know. This was great. Well, we normally spend an hour on each of these little applets training, exactly. right? Exactly. So, okay. It's so I think true. those nuggets in five minutes is 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 quick. Well, you know, I think like because the plan is to do this. Um, I mean, I'd like to do it every week. I don't know if you guys would like to do it every week, but I think if we do it every week, you know, we could essentially spend an hour or thirty minutes on two specific applets. So, you know, people will um, get a little bit more out of it. 
right? So this is the first one. So we were kind of like, you know, we were kind of just kind of seeing what worked and, and, and what didn't. So I think going forward, we could probably dive into two, right? Yeah. That people will get I think that's great. I think one thing that, um, I mean, Shannon, you did so great on smart plans. I really wanted us to have time for you to show everybody how to like use the carefully tagged, you know, people that people have in their database to add people to smart plans. I think that would be something that we can maybe talk about next week, just the organization of contacts and how that really empowers you to be quick in your communication. For sure. I like that idea. Awesome. Smart plans, I think we have a ton of, we have a ton of development coming for smart plans. We didn't even get into command market center. We hung it out there as like this little carrot and we didn't even get into it. So, lots of we keep them coming back. That's how we keep them coming back, right? Yep, yeah, exactly. Command exactly. market center is coming. <laughs> so yeah, next, next week, uh, same time, same place. And, you know, we'll choose, you know, we'll choose like two. And we can you we can do command MC as one of the two, and then dive into something else and get a little bit more um, strategic and you know detailed. So. Yeah, definitely. I think there's a huge opportunity to show everybody how to like live in it too, like how to work command, how to generate business. What are like the the main three applets they could use on a day to day, and just put that on repeat. You know. Yeah. Oh, totally. Well, thanks so much for joining us and, 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 and thank you, Leslie, Shannon, and Laura for, for doing this. And I'm sorry if I talked too much. I will not talk. <laughs> we always want to hear what you have to say. You always Full disclosure you to the group. We did sure. ask you to talk before we had this. We were like, Nick, please, please guide us. You know and you all taught me something. Every single one of you taught me something in command today that I did not know. And that's yeah, I learned from every single one too. Wow, well, yeah, I, we're, we're well, learning together. <laughs> I just learned that you could do thumbnails and designs. I'm like, what? I didn't know you could do folders. I, <laughs> I learned where to find the app images that you've been using. I literally thought you were taking screenshots of your own phone, Nick. I was like, where is he finding these really cool <laughs> graphics? Well, I was before they release. Yeah, I was before they release the, the, the images, and now I just use um the um you know the the images they have in there but but yeah so people are saying yeah next time spend a little more time and yes it's recorded everything is recorded it will be it, it'll it'll be on command your conversion uh in the group and then it'll be on youtube uh, by later today or tomorrow but but uh awesome well thanks we'll let everybody go and hope you uh enjoyed it and we'll see you next time and uh yeah we'll dig in a little bit deeper on just a couple other things specifically and get more focused Awesome. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Nick. Bye, everyone. Thanks, Nick. Thanks for your question. Bye, everyone. Bye.